Welcome to the Real Estate Espresso Podcast, your morning shot of what's new in the world of real estate investing. For Tuesday, October the 4th, I'm your host, Victor Menashe. On today's show, we're talking about staff retention and how to address the staffing shortage that is plaguing many industries. Nowhere is worker burnout being felt more acutely than in the healthcare arena, whether we're talking about acute care like in a hospital setting or more chronic care like you'd see in assisted living. Worker burnout is a major issue. Many of you know that I'm a part owner in a senior living and memory care development that we completed back in 2021. Senior care is a service business that happens to be built on a real estate platform. The folks at Senior Housing News just published the results of a survey on workforce perspectives in the industry. More than half of the housing providers surveyed in the 2021 Workforce 360 survey said that employee turnover is their top workforce challenge, and nearly a third said the same thing about finding and hiring qualified candidates. In June of this year, OnShift conducted a survey to gain a deeper understanding of the senior care workforce. Nearly 1,800 senior care professionals responded, representing a wide range of industry segments, including assisted living, skilled nursing, continuing care retirement communities, independent living, memory care, home health, as well as some other health care sectors. Respondents not only provided insight as to who they were, They also share their perspectives on the industry, the challenges they face, and what they value both inside and outside of work. These perspectives are critical as organizations continually evolve their workforce strategies to meet the needs of the workforce. When asked about the most significant challenges they're currently facing, respondents rank feeling stressed and burned out as the highest at 49%. Surprisingly, the level of stress and burnout matched last year's survey results even with a 38% decrease in fear and safety concerns due to COVID-19. Respondents also reported being challenged with staying healthy, that is 38%. 37% reported day-to-day financial struggles and lack of savings. And 35% reported having not enough time for themselves. In addition, respondents were asked to rank their level of burnout or stress. Most indicated they were moderately, very, or extremely burned out at 61% followed by slightly burned out at 24%. Only a small group indicated they were not burned out or stressed at all at 15%. Despite the increase in feeling supported by their organization, 57% of respondents indicated they have considered leaving their job in the past year. Among this cohort, the majority said that they would do so for better pay or benefits at 52%, 34% they would leave for improved work-life balance, and 26% said they would leave for better career growth opportunities. Caregivers also indicated a slightly higher interest than other respondents in working outside of healthcare altogether at 17%. Open ended responses largely pointed to staffing levels, poor workplace culture, high mental and physical stress, and poor relationships with managers as reasons for potentially leaving their job. When asked besides money what would help retain them in their current job, the majority of respondents cited better staffing levels at 54% as the key driver. When workers feel supported, they're more likely to report lower levels of burnout or stress than those who do not feel supported. That, in turn, impacts their views on both where they work and the industry as a whole. There's many factors that play a role in whether workers feel supported by the organization, but outside of pay and additional perks or benefits, staffing levels were the most significant driver of retention. One of the key messages in the report is that senior care organizations should consider initiatives that allow them to maintain a more consistent staffing level, ensure workers are not left feeling stressed and burned out by being overworked and overscheduled. Now, here's my take on the report and the findings. Culture trumps tactics each and every time. If you have a culture of people working to their limit, then you'll often push them over the edge. If you have a culture of caring for your residents and making sure that you have enough staff to take proper care of people, then burnout ceases to be an issue. And I know this is a difficult thing because there's a lot of competition for too few workers. The report in the companion document has a large section that focuses on employee perks and how employee perks can help retain people. Well, I'm definitely in favor of creating WOW experiences for both residents and for staff. But in order for a WOW for a perk to be effective and being perceived as a value, you have to first eliminate the unwows that are detracting from the experience and standing in the way of seeing the positive. You will never eliminate all negative aspects of a job. Some of the negatives simply come with the job, but you have to demonstrate a commitment to eliminating the deal breakers. And unless you do, you're going to continue to lose staff and perpetuate that spiral of employee burnout. If you're going to create a culture that's going to retain people, it starts with the leadership. It starts with those few people at the very top 
who are in fact setting the tone, creating the environment for those employees to work. Those few people are the most critical hires, and if you don't get that right, you're going to lose the rest of your staff. Now, the findings in this report seem to make sense when we're talking about the high-touch, high-needs environment of caring for loved ones. But in truth, all of these lessons in leadership apply to virtually any industry. As you think about that, have an awesome rest of your day. Go make some great things happen. We'll talk to you again tomorrow.